Today's episode is brought to you by Audible. Squat wisely with a brand new audiobook. Visit http colon forward slash forward slash www.audibletrial.com forward slash squat and get a free audiobook with your 30 day trial membership. You know, people ask me all the time, you know, why do you call the podcast Squat Wisely? Well, I call it Squat Wisely because it is a combination of my life. I work in the fitness industry, but I am also a college teacher. And the subject that I teach is philosophy. Squats happen to be one of my favorite exercises for many reasons. And wisely is because by definition, philosophy means the love of wisdom. So I have combined squat wisely to be a direct reflection of two vital areas of my life. And I think it will equally become vital areas in your life, especially when you tune in. Welcome to another episode of the Squat Wisely Podcast. I am Kristen Hester, your host. Guys, thank you so much for coming back and checking out another episode. For this episode, we have an interesting guest, a guest I think you will enjoy listening to. He may give you a completely different perspective as it relates to the healthcare system, even uh, your own approach and outlook to ways you've dealt with your own health in the past, as well as how you may proceed when it comes to dealing with your health in the future. Uh, Some of his thoughts may be considered controversial to some, or it may very well speak to a truth that you already embrace. Either way, I trust that you will gain some insight. I trust that you'll learn something uh, that will be interesting, uh, whether it challenges you or uh, speaks to something that resonates very deep within, you'll certainly be in for a treat. So stay tuned. And when we return from the break, we'll be right back with Dr. Scott Whitaker. Get a world-class motivational speaker to your next event. Kristen Hester offers professional speaking services in Atlanta, Georgia and beyond. To hire Kristen, visit www. Dot Kristenspeaks.com. K R I S T E N. You are listening to the Squat Wisely podcast, and today we have Dr. Scott Whitaker, an accomplished author, a naturopathic doctor, and he is going to discuss with us some great things about health, the medical industry, diet, and probably a lot more. Please welcome Dr. Whitaker to the show. Welcome. Greetings, greetings, family. How are you? I am great. How are you? Beautiful, beautiful. Honor and pleasure to be on your your show, and uh, I want to thank you. Thank you. Now, tell us a little bit. I know you are a naturopathic doctor, so tell us a little bit first about who you are, and then explain to listeners the role of the naturopathic doctor. Uh, Dr. Whitaker from the infamous South Central Los Angeles. Wow, I've been around herbs and vitamins and minerals since uh, my first recollection is about five years old. Um, my dad used to send me every day, load me up before school. And what I recall is that uh, I never missed a day of school. I got the perfect attendance award from K through 12. Um, as I got into college and got into my studies, uh, sciences, I met a Seminole Indian on campus. He said, never take the gringo's medicine. And I, I, you know, that blew me away. So what are you talking about? He said, only use golden seal and echinacea. So I ran to the library, got the only book that was there. It was called the uh, Back to Eden. And I read Back to Eden from front to back. And that was it. That set off the the fire in me and the desire to learn all I could about uh, natural medicine. Awesome. Well, your book, Medicine, uh, Dick Gregory said about your book, he said, it is a book that should be right next to people's Bibles. When you heard about that, what were your thoughts? 
<laughs> well, my sophomore year in college, uh, Mr. Gregory came to, I was at UC Berkeley. He came and, uh, you know, it came one of the black affairs and he spoke. And man, his, his lecture by itself on top of just learning about back to Eden was just the, like nail in the coffin. And my, my transformation even went even faster. And, uh, what's, what's really amazing about that is, you know, I, I, I look at man, him as a teacher mentor and then for him to, you know, make a quote on my book was just an honor for someone who I saw in an audience. And then, 20 years later, he's, you know, making a quote on my book was was phenomenal. Phenomenal indeed. You know, in your book, uh, I like something that you address, and I want you to kind of dive into that on the show. You talk about the fact that the healthcare system is really a system to manage health, but not heal health. Explain that to us. Oh, yeah. The current... uh medical paradigm that we're under here in America is a uh, number one for the listeners. Uh, they are not looking for any cure for any disease. I don't care if they um, talk about ice buckets, pink ribbons, walk a sing a whatever it is, all that money that's drawn from those events is given back to research and development to make new drugs. They're not about trying to find any type of cure. They got these uh, uh, fake months coming up like in October with that con woman, Susan Conman, and uh, and her pink ribbons and pink buckets of chicken. And she uh, is so, so-called promoting breast cancer awareness. I call it breast cancer unawareness month. Because they really do not teach the women how to prevent cancer. So the system of, the, of health that we're under is about managing our diseases. And since they do not want a cure for anything, they want to manage the disease to make sure that you keep coming for your annual checkups. Make sure you keep getting your routine exams. And then finally... They get you set up in that web and you're taking the drugs, you're getting set up for surgery and your money is going out the bank. You know, 80% of all bankruptcies is because of medical costs now. So this is the system that we're under and this is why it's a disease management system. It's not about health care because health doesn't need care. Disease does. Very profound. Uh, in your book, I know, you, like you mentioned earlier about echinacea, I'm a big fan of taking echinacea myself. What are some of the um, herbs that people should think about researching and kind of incorporating into their own diets? Oh, well, let's see. Well, right off the bat, you know, peppermint is one. Uh, Oregon grape root, poke root, potiarco, chaparral, red clover, sheep sorrel, burdock root, dandelion. That's a, that's a good start for the people right there. Uh, I'm a fan of, big fan of potiarco, big fan of peppermint, and a big fan of dandelion. So for something like peppermint, what's a good benefit with peppermint? Oh, I have a uh, uh, a cup every night. Uh, it's excellent for digestion, and it uh, kind of relaxes the whole mood of the body. Gets it ready for uh, at least for me for, for my sleep, and uh, it's mainly for me for I like it just for uh, digestion because after I eat my last meal. Uh, I wait about three hours later and then I'll have something to drink and peppermint is my choice of drink. So speaking about meals, you know, everybody 
for you know years now, people have been vegan, but it's become I think even more popular, uh, especially like the plant based lifestyles, the alkaline lifestyles. But I also know that you have supported openly, you know, incorporating meat into the diet. So from your perspective, what are some pros and cons with a vegan lifestyle as well as a lifestyle that incorporates meat as well? well plant based. I guess my diet is is plant based. My Percentages are probably 80, 20, 80 percent vegetables, fruits. Uh, the rest is uh, water and meat. Um, what I've seen from clients that have come to me with who are vegans, uh, one, it's almost like a cult following, um, and 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 and. The uh, attitudes are a little different, but uh, I see a lot of deficiencies, uh, B12, zinc, tryptophan, um, uh, loose teeth, and uh, anger and uh, emotion issues. So I look at the vegan diet as a short term, uh, mainly for those who may be going through transition, dealing with a certain illness. Uh, in short term, meaning uh, three to six months, um, being blessed and tra- and being blessed and having to travel the world. Now I've been to five continents, and uh, I have never seen or uh, or have uh, witnessed a vegan society anywhere in, in that travel. Um, I've noticed that in, here in the U.S., a lot of the, uh, I guess, promoters of the vegan diet uh, are really uh, coming from a European mindset. And these uh, individuals who were the promoters of veganism, they all did. They didn't, most of them didn't live past 70. And... Uh, so I'm looking for longevity. I'm looking for longevity from a diet. Then if I'm going to, because I don't promote any diet, but if I'm going to promote a diet, I'm going to look for it in terms of longevity. Uh, I want to see where the longevity is with this diet. And the oldest living people on the planet, by, by observation and by record, are the Hunzas in northern Pakistan the Japanese in Okinawa, and the Maasai in Kenya, and they're all meat eaters. So, uh, like I said, the vegan diet, uh, short term, I don't see any issue with it. Um, of course, what I do see a lot with vegans or vegetarians is that they really are not that. They are carbotarians, and they, they stuff themselves with a lot of starches. Uh, ended up leading themselves towards diabetes and uh, weight gain. So, uh, and then when we talk about meat, we always have to, uh, I know they, they generalize, they just say meat. Well, what kind of meat? I, I'm not, I would never, uh, recommend or promote any meat that's sold in the commercial market, any meat that has hormones, antibiotics, or uh, uh, nitrates, only meat I, I will recommend is wild-caught meat, meat that's fed on grass, and in terms of fish, fish that are, that are caught in uh, wild waters, now, nothing on a farm. Nothing in a laboratory, so uh, that must that must be distinguished when we when people just say meat. What, what kind of meat? What meat are you talking about? So, uh, and of course, with with any food, uh, even meat is small amounts. Um, everything in moderation. You you can people can die from um, drinking too much water. So. <clears throat> Uh, 
I know meat gets blamed for everything, but that's not the case. Very good. You know, I have uh, your book here and something I